Hi guys, welcome to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll explain a horror, thriller movie, Bad Hair. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins with young Anna pretending to be a radio host while her older cousin, Linda, reads. The two of them are waiting for the hair formula cream to take effect on Anna's short curly black hair. While they wait, Anna complains that the formula cream hurts. All of a sudden, Linda's mother calls them. Anna tells Linda to wash her hair already. The two of them proceed to the bathroom. While Linda washes Anna's hair, she realizes that she made a mistake because Anna's hair starts to fall off. Linda exclaims that she did what the box told her to. To her surprise, Anna looks at her hair in a mirror and sees that it leaves a huge wound on her scalp. Anna then screams. In 1989 Los Angeles, now a young woman, Anna is fixing her black short curly hair in front of a mirror. She then touches the scar on her scalp and remembers what happened when she was a child. Eventually, she attends a job interview for the rock music video company. After this, she goes to Culture, where she works as an executive assistant. Anna realizes that she comes in late because everyone is gathered in the office having a meeting. While at the meeting, she and her co-workers, Brooke Lynn and Sista Soul, talk about Julius, the host of The Block Programming. The owner, Grant, then announces that Edna will be leaving the executive vice president position and will be replaced by the former supermodel, Zora. After this, Zora announces that they will be calling Culture as cult. She also introduces the new executive assistant, Rosalind. Grant also announces the programming schedule of Cult featuring their program, The Block, with the pop star, Sandra. After the meeting, Anna, Sista Soul, and Brooke Lynn talk to Edna about the position. Edna then tells them that she will start her own production company and that she will call Anna, Sista Soul, and Brooke Lynn when it begins. Anna expresses to Edna that she will be waiting for Edna's call. Following this, while they are airing, The Block, Anna, Sista Soul, Brooke Lynn, and other co-workers talk about the weaved hair of Sandra. Later, Anna talks to Julius about their secret relationship. Julius asks her if she is aware that he is seeing someone. Anna tries to change the subject by trying to humor him. Julius then ends their secret relationship telling Anna that she is the only one pushing for it. Later evening, at her apartment, Anna is watching culture classics on her television. Suddenly, her landlord knocks at her door, telling her that her payment is 10 days late. Anna stands and turns off the television and stays quiet. The landlord then expresses that she will be kicked out if she will not pay him. After a moment, the landlord expresses that he will be back tomorrow. The next day, Zora interviews Anna. She learns that Anna is the one who came up with the block. She then asks Anna questions about the culture. Anna tells her that they need to cultivate a wider audience. Anna then suggests a live countdown show. Zora asks her to write her treatment, sample scripts, and budget. Unexpectedly, Anna quickly presents prepared write-ups to Zora. Zora then tells her that she will promote her as an associate producer. Before Anna leaves Zora's office, Zora suggests Anna that she change her hair. Later, Anna finds a Virgie's hair salon card from Rosalind on her desk. Following this, Anna visits her aunt and uncle's house. While holding a red book, Anna's uncle mentions a moss hair girl. Linda's partner gets the book from Anna's uncle. Anna's aunt asks Anna about her work. Before she can answer, Linda interrupts her. She announces that her faculty appoint her to teach history in addition to English literature. Anna then informs her adoptive family about her having her show. After congratulating her, Linda's partner expresses his fascination with folklore while he reads the red book. Anna mutters that it is ridiculous. Her uncle shows her contempt. He talks about folklore and how it should not be neglected because it is embedded in their identity and culture. After this, Anna's aunt asks her about her rent situation. She gives her money as help. At first, Anna refuses, but her aunt insists on telling her that she can pay her back when her show comes through. Before she leaves the house, her uncle apologizes and gives her the Red Book of Folklore. The following day, Anna goes to Virgie's hair salon bringing the Red Book. The front desk assistant of the salon tells her that she needs to get an appointment which is a long process before she can have her hair weaved. She then insists on getting her hair weaved by appealing to Virgie, the salon owner, about dreams. Virgie finally agrees to have her hair weaved. After waiting for an hour, Virgie let her choose a hair. Anna picks a hair which is from India. After this, Virgie begins to weave the hair to Anna's scalp. Due to the pain, Anna faints. Anna wakes up, and her hair is done. She looks into the mirror and sees that she now has black long, straight hair. Virgie advises her to use essential oil for her scalp. Virgie also warns her not to get it wet. Suddenly, Sandra arrives at the salon with Jermaine D., a co-pop star. Sandra tells Anna that she does not let her hair get wet. Anna, upon seeing Sandra expresses her fondness of the pop star. Later evening, at her apartment, Anna keeps putting essential oil on her scalp since it is hurting her. The landlord knocks again at his apartment, telling her to pay. 
This time, Anna confronts her landlord and tells him that she has already paid him. Another tenant interrupts them because of the overflowing toilet. As Anna goes to sleep, she urges to read the red book her uncle gave her. She then falls asleep while reading it. The following day, Anna goes to work. She sees that everyone is looking at her noticing her new hairstyle. Julius also notices it and tries to ask her on a date. However, Anna just rolls her eyes at Julius. She then passes Zora, who is walking with a coworker. Zora mutters an approval to Anna's new hair. While she is working, Anna accidentally slices a wound on her finger. Suddenly, Rosalind greets her. Anna expresses her gratitude for leaving Virgie's salon card on her desk. Rosalind tells her that she overheard the conversation about Zora telling Anna to change her hair. Rosalind then tells Anna that there will be a conference meeting later, and Zora wants Anna to attend it. Anna then expresses her delight. When Rosalind leaves, Anna notices that some of her hair enters the wound on his finger. To her disgust, Anna pulls it off. Following this, Anna goes to the conference meeting where Zora explains that there will be no more cooking show or hair show for the current programming of culture. Sista Sol, Brooke Lynn, and Cheryl express their frustration. Zora asks for Anna's backup. Sista Sol and Brooke Lynn express that they feel betrayed about Zora talking to Anna about them. Anna then dismisses the statement. During this, she keeps on tapping her head because her scalp hurts. Zora then informs them that she wants to reprogram culture by doing a live countdown show as suggested by Anna. After this, Zora scolds Anna for not backing her up at Zora's office. Anna asks Zora if she is going to give her the show. Zora answers that she wants to see who works best before she decides. Anna also learns from Zora that Julius and Zora have a relationship. With this, Anna confronts Julius about what she learns. However, Julius tries to seduce her, but Anna dismisses her in rage. Following this, while Anna is at her apartment, she falls asleep on one of her couches and dreams of looking in front of the mirror with yellow eyes, and her hair is changing. She wakes up to the sound of someone knocking. She opens the door and sees that it is Linda. Anna and Linda eat dinner together. While they are conversing, Anna does not notice that her hair falls to the plate and sucks all the ketchup. Before Linda leaves, she gives Anna a gift. When Anna opens it, it is a cassette tape, a recording of her when she was a child trying to pose as a radio host. After Linda leaves, the landlord, who is drunk, enters Anna's apartment. Anna thought that the landlord was there to ask her to pay. Anna attempts to pay, but the landlord expresses that he is not there for the payment. The landlord then tries to rape her. Anna distracts her by saying that they need music because of thin walls. Anna then turns on the television and secretly reaches for a cutter inside a drawer. The landlord pulls her to him. Anna gets the chance to stab the landlord on his chest. In response to the stab, the landlord pins her to the bed. While at it, Anna's eyes changes to yellow then her hair extends. When Anna sits up, he sees that the landlord is dead while her extended hair sucks all the blood out of the landlord. The following morning, the landlord's dead body is found in the dumpster near Anna's apartment. During a conference meeting at Culture, Anna notices that Brooke Lynn and the others weaved their hair, and Sista Sol is not the only one having her hair weaved. Sista Sol expresses that she does not want to change who she is. After the conference meeting, Anna convinces Sista Sol to change her hair inside the dressing room. When Sista Sol leaves, Anna looks at herself in the mirror and sees that her eyes turn yellow and look wicked. Later evening, while Anna is trying to apply essential oil to her dried up hair, the essential oil runs out. After this, she goes to work and sees Sista Sol finally had her hair weaved at a VJ audition. After the audition, Anna again expresses to Zora her interest in becoming the host of the live countdown show. Zora dismisses her after Julius interrupts them. Anna suspects Zora is similarly afflicted when Zora asks cryptic questions about whether Anna is still using the essential oil. Meanwhile, Anna also notices that Sista Sol, despite her confidence, changes her attitude. Before coming to the party, Anna tries to comb her dried up hair, but it is not getting straight. Since Anna has a period at the moment, the hair extends again and reaches her private part where it sucks her blood. To Anna's surprise, her hair becomes straight again. Following this, at a party celebration of 24-hour music of culture, Edna confronts Anna, who is dissatisfied with Anna's sale of culture's image and condemns her weaving as evidence of her lack of principles. After this, Anna gets the chance to talk to Germaine D where he asks if Anna goes back to the salon. Anna tells Germaine D that she does not come back yet. Germaine D expresses that she notices how Sandra changes after coming to the salon from time to time. Eventually, Grant interrupts them. Germaine D then leaves Anna. Grant expresses his delight to Anna, referring to her as the weapon of culture. Anna then learns that Zora has made herself host of the live countdown show instead. After this, Anna sees Julius and Zora fighting. 
Julius sees Anna and expresses his frustration with Zora and that he misses Anna. Afterward, the hare possesses Anna while she is having sex with Julius. Anna then viciously stabs Julius with a broken wine glass. Anna's hair eventually sucks Julius's blood. Anna then seeks Linda's help to recall the moss-haired girl, an African-American slave folklore from the Red Book given to her by her uncle. The story is about a slave who makes a wig out of tree moss to imitate her owner's straight hair, but the moss turns out to be the hair of deceased witches who control the slave. Following this, Anna bumps into Edna in a natural hair salon to have the weave removed. She tearfully apologizes for failing her, but the hair kills everyone in the salon as the hairdresser tries to get her weave out. Afterward, Anna is distraught when she discovers that Zora and others who acquired weaves from Virgis are possessed. Meanwhile, when Zora tries to break free from the possession, her hair kills her. The following morning, Anna tries to soak her hair in the rain. However, Rosalind approaches her and tells her they need a host since Zora is missing. During the show, Anna substitute as a host. She then sees Zora in the crowd. After the show, Anna approaches Rosalind at Zora's office and tells her that she saw Zora. To Anna's surprise, long hair comes out of Zora's office and drags Rosalind inside eventually killing Rosalind. The hare, now in complete possession of Zora and the others, pursues Anna through the building. She prepares to die by lighting a cigarette while trapped in a sound booth. Anna does, however, see a sprinkler and activate it, causing water to drench her and the others, withering her hair and enabling her to cut it off. Eventually, Anna returns to live with her aunt and uncle and discovers the essential oil is produced from pig's blood and is supposed to help nourish the hare. She notices new culture commercials showing Zora, who has survived the witch's hair and is now entirely possessed by it. She then finishes reading the narrative of the moss-haired girl, wherein the plantation master's successors continue to cultivate the hair despite its mind-controlling properties. The movie ends with a vehicle with a similar logo as the tree moss traveling out to a plantation. Its people then tosses the bodies of the hare's victims and packs up boxes of hair. Grant is eventually revealed to be the plantation owner, and a tree teeming with squirming hair grows alongside. Linda then reveals that she has an appointment with Virgie to put in a weave. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.